Hey guys, so I'm finally doing this part two to my original copyright video. Uh, I wanted to go over some of the questions that you guys mentioned in the comments and some of the things that I just didn't get to in the first video. Sorry, it's been a while for this. I had a lot of things change uh, during the Nona times. I fell in love, I got married, and as you could see, I am super pregnant. So lots of things changing, I'm very excited, but let's get to the video. So basically I'm gonna hop right into a screen recording and I'm gonna try to answer as many questions that I came across along the way. I'm registering an actual song of mine today that I need to have copyrighted, so let's get started. I'd also like to mention that I am not a lawyer and this is not legal advice. This is just personally what I would do for copyright and advice that I would give a friend. Okay, so jumping right in, you're gonna go to Google and you're going to look up United States Library of Congress copyright or you can also just go to www.copyright.gov, which is the US Copyright Office. They're all the same thing. But anyways, it'll bring you to this page. We're gonna go ahead and go to Register Works because that's what this video is all about. So once you get to this page, go ahead and scroll down and there'll be types of works that you can register. Since we're doing a song, which is performing arts, we'll go ahead and click that one. And then from this page, if you go ahead and click on that button underneath the image that says, register a work of the performing arts, then that will take you to the portal to log in to your copyright account. And here is the login for electronic copyright office. In my previous video, I give a link on how to get to this page directly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and log straight in. So as soon as you've logged in, it will take you to this page where you can register a work with the standard application. That's if you're copywriting one song. Uh, one of the things you asked was how can I register a group? So in this section, you can click on registering a group of published works or unpublished works. So for me, it's usually songs that I haven't released yet. Um, so I would click on unpublished works and it tells you right here that you can submit up to 10 songs. That doesn't mean that you have to submit 10 songs. You could submit six songs or five songs. So anyways, go ahead and click continue and it'll take you to this page, which is very similar to the page for the standard application. I actually think this is perfectly the same. But anyways, the type of work that you're doing will be a sound recording. And then go ahead and click the box to confirm that you've read the above and continue. So on this titles page, it's the same as the standard application that you do for one song. Uh, what you're adding here is the name of the song or work that you're submitting for copyright. So if you submit six songs, you're gonna put six titles with a name for each of those songs. So go ahead and click new. And this is where you're gonna put the title of each work and you're gonna do it one by one. So go ahead and put in the first song of the group of songs that you're copywriting. Um, so we'll put Roses on the Moon here, and then we'll click Save. And there it is, Roses on the Moon. So well, now what you'll do is you'll go ahead and click New, and you'll add the next title. So just to show you, for example, let's put in a song that I've already had copy written, and I'm gonna put in Sticks and Stones, and hit Save. And as you can see, I have both song titles there, and you can go in and just put another song and continue on like that. So the next part of this is entering in the year of completion. And this might be a little confusing considering you're doing a group of songs. It's a little bit easier with the standard application because you're only copywriting one song. But generally what I do is I usually copyright a group of songs that we're all done with in the same year. So if I wrote all the songs in 2018, then I'll put 2018. So all the rest of this is actually going to be the exact same as my last copyright video that I did. If you guys want, there's a link to that in the description where I go over each of these sections in detail. Um, since this video is more to answer extra questions that you guys have had, I'm not going to take you through every single step. But one thing I want to point out to you guys is actually in the rights and permissions section. So let's go ahead and go in there. This is where you're gonna provide contact information for a person or organization to contact you regarding your copyright. So this information is going to be publicly posted on their website for people to be able to contact you if they have questions about using your song or other. So anything that you put here, just make sure it's information that you would wanna share publicly. I include my email because I have my email posted publicly anyway for people to contact me but maybe you wouldn't want to put your address or your phone number. 
I had my address as well because it's just a mailing address. So really it's up to you, but just be aware that that is a factor. So from here on out, it's pretty much the same. And when you go to check out, you'll upload songs the same way. You're just gonna upload more than one. So let's go ahead and skip over to the next part of this video where I go over some of the extra questions that you guys had concerning the standard application. All right, so if we're just gonna be copywriting one song, we're just going to register a work with the standard application, which is the first thing you can select. So with the standard application, it doesn't matter if it's published or unpublished, it will work for either. So let's just skip to some of the differences here with the standard application and some of the extra questions that you guys had. So one thing you'll notice that's different about the standard application because you can use it for an unpublished or published work is the publication part that's added to the completion section. So basically this is where you'll say whether or not the work has been published. And then after that, you'll put in the year of completion. And again, just with this rights and permissions section, make sure you're not sharing information that you wouldn't want to share publicly, but you do still have a way in here for people to contact you if they have questions about your copyright. Other than that, I've already gone over everything else here in my last video. So let's go ahead and skip over to what happens after you've reviewed your submission and you make your payment because that's when you'll actually be able to upload your works. And I'm also going to show you guys how you can upload your lyrics with your sound recording. So first you'll add everything to your cart and then you'll choose whether you want to pay with credit card or deposit account. And after you've paid for the copyright is when you'll be able to actually upload the song. So I obviously am not including the point where I paid for the thing because you guys don't need those details. Um, but once you've submitted the payment, it'll take you to this page and you'll see how much was paid. For me, that was $65 because I chose to do the standard application, but you can actually save a lot of money by doing the group application because I'm pretty sure it's $85. I'm going to go ahead and put the prices up right here. Um, so you will save money by copywriting, say, 10 songs or even copywriting three songs instead of copywriting three individuals. Anyways, on this page, just go ahead and hit continue. Now, once you've hit continue, this is where you're actually gonna be able to upload your files. If you can see here, there's a green button that says select files to upload. And something you should note is that once it's uploaded, you can't unupload them. So just make sure that you're uploading the correct file and not making a mistake with that. What you can do that I've done once before when I accidentally uploaded something that I didn't mean to, um, I hit refresh on my browser and then it was gone and it didn't take me out of the application, but it was a little bit sketch and I uploaded the correct file afterwards and I just hope that they got the correct one. <laughs> so moral of the story is it's better just to be sure that you're putting the right one in in the first place. And one thing I'd like to put here, because so many people asked me how you can upload your lyrics and what they should use, here it says an acceptable file type. And you'll actually see here that the acceptable file types can also be Word docs. So the files that you're uploading can be a sound recording along with a Word document that has all of your lyrics written in there. So since I'm actually doing a real copyright in today's video, I'm going to go ahead and go into my downloads and pull the song that I want to copyright, which is Roses on the Moon. And you can see it's right there, but I'm not going to hit start upload yet because I'm also going to grab the Roses on the Moon lyrics, which is a Word doc. And once I have those both in there, I'll hit start upload. And now I've got both my sound recording and my lyrics uploaded to be submitted for copyright. And once you're done with that, go ahead over here and click on the green button to complete your submission. And there it goes. So claim submission completed, no further action required. Um, at this point, you can go back to the home page. You can exit the page. It doesn't really matter. Basically everything that you've needed to do is done and you just need to wait for them to review your files and they'll get back to you in the mail. And another question that someone had here was how long does it take until you actually receive your copyright certificate in the mail? And the best answer that I could find was that on average it's about three months, uh, though it can take up to seven months. Personally, I've experienced five months and I think around six months. So I don't know who's receiving it in three months, but apparently that's a possibility. Just 
try to be patient while you're waiting for your song. So that's all the extra questions that I wanted to show you guys within the actual application itself. And now I'm gonna go ahead and switch back over to my face and we're gonna answer some of the other questions that you had that aren't covered here, but I thought were important to go over. Anyways, I hope that screen recording was more helpful for you. I have my computer here, so I'm gonna go ahead and answer some of the questions that I didn't get to. So the first question is from Melik. Uh, he said, or she said, I don't know. I didn't check your profile picture. What is the difference between registering your musical composition with a PRO versus the sound recording with USLC? Do you need to do both? Does the sound recording you upload with USLC need to be the final version of the recording? Thanks. Okay, so good question. I'm gonna start off by saying that the sound recording does not need to be the final version of the song necessarily. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later. So let's get on to like the main part of this question. For those of you that don't know, a PRO is a performance rights organization. And the main function that they have is to make sure that you get paid your royalties when a song of yours is performed in public or broadcasted, um, and they just make sure you get paid. They do other stuff too, but the like main concern is getting you your money. Um, one of the main parts of your question, a PRO does not give you copyright, so you will still need copyright even if you're going to publish the song with them. And there's a few different ways that you can do that. You could do that with um, services like Cosin or through the United States Library of Co United States Library of Congress or basically the Copyright Office. Personally, if you guys want to know what I do is I will copyright a song through the United States Library of Congress and then I publish it through CD Baby and CD Baby will distribute it across like Spotify, iTunes, yada 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 and they pay me as people play the song. Okay, the next question is from Dang Man. 72 and he said or she said i'm just gonna say they said they said hi Haley. do you happen to know with regard to that limitation of claim screen if simply registering the sound recording for a cover song does one need to enter in the pre-existing registration information like the registration information of the person who had the copyright on the original song or is this on the contrary only asking if there's pre-existing material with specific regard to what the sound recording form specifically covers in the first place okay so i was a little bit confused on this one but i did try to answer it as best as possible so basically you'll complete the limitation of claim section if the sound recording that you're doing like a cover song has a good amount of un Unclaimable material. Unclaimable material means songs that were A, previously published, published meaning that it was distributed to the public, B, previously registered for copyright, which if you're doing a cover song with someone else's song, I would assume that that is a copyrighted song. C, the song is in the public domain. Since every like song or work of art naturally has copyright, if it's just in the public domain, what they don't have would be a copyright registration. But everyone has copyright on something that they make or D, any material that's owned by a separate entity or legal party, like a record label. So obviously um, a cover song would fit this description, but I did find a link on their website that gives you more information on how exactly to do this. So I'm gonna put that in the description below. I also included a really helpful blog of what every artist needs to know or something like that about copyright. And they have a really great short paragraph that like simply covers what you need to be doing for copyright on a cover song. Next question. So the next question is from Lord MGH, and they say, thank you so much for that informative video. I have a question though. What happens if I wanna register my sound recording, which has lyrics and music with it? but I wanna have ownership with myself and a pseudoname I create. My question is, can the pseudoname be also considered copywritten or do I have to trademark the name and logo? Your input would be greatly appreciated, thank you. So this was a really interesting question and one I was not prepared to answer, but I do have an answer for you. And like I said in the beginning, I'm not a lawyer, so this isn't like any sort of legal advice. This is just like what I would tell you as your friend on what I think you should do. So basically you're free to register any under any names that you would like, but I would recommend using your actual legal name because it'll be much easier to prove your identity as the owner of that song in court should you ever need to take anyone to court. Hopefully you don't, but if you do have any disputes, if it's under a pseudoname, maybe not so easy to prove the identity. And if you're gonna do it under a pseudoname and your legal name anyway, then is the pseudoname really needed? It might just be more straightforward just to use your legal name. Next question. So this is from Uncool 
97. I think you're pretty cool. And they say, this video was extremely helpful. You're welcome, thank you. So when you do the copyright application for your song, can you go ahead and release this song same day or same week? Or do you have to give it time or wait? I, there's not like a simple answer to this, but I would say yes. You can release a song the same day that you copyright it or even before, and here is why. Your song is naturally copyrighted. When people talk about copyright or getting something copyrighted, what they're actually talking about is registering a copyright. So when you register something, you're making it like publicly known or recording it or getting a certificate with a business or a third party that says that Yes, you were the person that wrote this and here's the proof because you gave them the music and lyrics and everything at this earlier time than this other person who's like, I wrote the song. So you naturally do have copyright and what we're talking about is just getting like a certificate that says that you have the copyright. And again, it's totally up to the person whether you would wanna copyright something before releasing it. But personally, I've never felt threatened um, in that way just because I usually post an acoustic version or sample of the song up on my Instagram or YouTube before I ever like release an actual full version or copyright it. But anyways, I do copyright my songs just as a precaution and just cause it makes me feel more secure, but I've never felt uneasy or unsure about copywriting it the same day. Next question. So this one is from Siobhan White. I hope I said that right. Anyways, it says, hello, I have a question. So for copywriting your lyrics, you should have everything done with the song, vocals and music. So I think what you're asking is is, like for copywriting the lyrics and the song like should you have everything finished before you copyright it and I also saw this worded a couple different ways through all your guys comments and there's not exactly a simple straightforward answer for this because honestly like with legal stuff it's never straightforward even if someone you know like off someone which is why we have courts to like settle these things out as much as it would be nice if everything were black and white so anyway as I said before the song naturally is copyrighted as soon as you write it record it finish it it's yours it's copyrighted it has it naturally and we only register for a copyright certificate or proof and this is probably where I differ from some other artists or musicians and maybe this isn't the advice that a lawyer would give you but I as soon as I have a melody whether acoustic or whatever and the lyrics I'll record a sound recording of that melody and those lyrics together but they will be the final lyrics that I want and the final melody that I want. Just because if you really look at it, the entire purpose of the copyright and what the copyright is actually protecting is your lyrics and melody. So if you have that as a basic, then I personally think that you should be fine going into any more produced versions. However, that being said, a lot of lawyers will probably recommend that you have the fully completed and produced version copyrighted, so. But that's just my opinion. Ayo, my foot's asleep. So the next question is, can I use a voice recording or does it have to be professionally recorded? Love this question. Um, I don't have who wrote it because it actually wasn't specifically worded like this, but a few of you guys mentioned it as like part of your comments or just in a different way. Um, and I will say that I've used voice recordings from my phone. I've used professional like finished versions of a song. And I've also used just scratch recordings where I had like one of those like little desk mics and I just recorded me playing the guitar and singing the song. And I was like, yep, that's good. That's that's copyright. So I would say you could totally use voice recordings or whatever it is that you're using to record that sound as long as you have it in an acceptable format for what the Library of Congress or whatever service you're using wants you to upload it as. If your question is how can you get it in the right format, let me know in the comments if you guys want a video on how to easily switch something into the format you need. Okay, my final and last question. It's from X Plato Music and they say, sis, is there any way to copyright a song for free? And I feel that. I totally wish that I didn't have to spend money when I wanted to record a song. I think it sucks and honestly, it's up to you. I'm just more of like a um, better safe than sorry kind of person, which is why I prefer to get the song registered for copyright. But let's go into that a little bit more. Like I said, the song is naturally copyrighted, so technically copyright is free and it's the copyright registration that costs money. And I would say that the registration is just to more easily prove in a court setting that the song was yours so that you don't get ripped off and people don't steal 
your awesome ideas. Also, I found a wikiHow link on how to do free copyright. I didn't really read it, mostly because I didn't really understand what they were talking about, but maybe you could look at it. I put it in the description below so you can get that link. Okay, finally, just in addition to the questions that you guys asked that I thought were super awesome and things that I didn't think of, I also found a blog that I thought was super helpful. What was it called? what every musician should know about copyright. And they looked pretty like clear cut and like good answers and just simply laid out without a bunch of words thrown at you, just made to confuse you. So I put that in the description below that you can get to it. So with that, I'm all done and I hope the video wasn't too long. I hope I got to all your guys' questions, but if there was anything that I did miss, <sighs> Uh, I'm not gonna do part three, but I'll do my best to answer your comments in the question below. Um, and if you guys want a video on anything else, then just let me know um, and I'd be happy to help.